Hey, it's Terry, and this is the Something Spooky review of Suspiria, the 2018 film. It was released by Amazon Studios and was directed by Luca Guadagnino, who had just the year prior directed Call Me By Your Name, which is not a horror movie, but was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Of course, it is a remake or reimagining of the original Suspiria from 1977 by Dario Argento, which was a seminal film in the Italian giallo horror films. So it is more of a reimagining, an homage than a remake, and that's a lot of what we're going to talk about, but it's important to make that clear out the gate that the filmmakers themselves say that it is not a clear remake. So I think the most important thing to say at this point is that I don't like it near as much as the original, which is a horror classic and a very important movie. And it's you know hard to judge something against that kind of standard, but when it is taking the name and being a at least spiritual successor to that film, you kind of have to. And I don't think it lives up to that. But it is not a remake, as it has been said, and it is very much an entirely different movie. And that goes into the story it's telling and also the way that the movie operates on this kind of mechanical level. Because the original Suspiria, uh, as a lot of Italian giallo horror films, was known for color. Very, you know, saturated, deep reds and blues and purple. It was like this really assault of color. And this is the complete opposite, deliberately. The filmmakers said that they went for an absence of primary color and instead went for a winterish kind of feel with a lot of grays and browns. So it's just immediately going for something entirely different than the original film. Um, and also that is in the story, because the story here is, for one, been elongated. It's a two and a half hour movie now, so there's a lot of extra stuff in there. And most of that has to deal with its new kind of setting and backdrop, which is it takes place in Berlin in 1977 during the German autumn period, which I don't know much about, so I'm not going to speak to really, but it has to do with terrorism, terrorism and fascism from what I've read in a review of this movie. But I don't know too much more about that, but that is a major element in this movie where there are like news footage, you know, uh, feeds spliced into the other scenes that we're seeing. And it's very much casting a backdrop that was not in the original film at all. So that's very different. But this film, Suspiria 2018, is very modern in its scares and brutality. It is a gruesome movie. There are some very disturbing scenes, some extreme violence, but what's kind of contradictory in it is that those scenes are very sparsely littered throughout. There's really only two, and I won't ever get into you know in-depth spoilers, but there are essentially two very big scares in the middle about the film and the end of the film. And outside of that, there is a lot of you know creepy moments and, and kind of slow suspense, but also a lot of things that get into just the background of the story with the dance uh, hall that they are in and the German autumn setting. There's all these kind of different parts moving, and so there's a lot to take in, and then suddenly you get these very, very graphic explosions of horror out of nowhere. So to get into some of the elements of this uh, movie, Dakota Johnson, the, in the lead role, is very good and is one of the highlights of the movie. There is music made by Tom York of Radiohead, which is interesting and very jarring at points. It doesn't always totally work for me. I think he also did a lot of the kind of scoring and ambiance of the music and of that part is cool, but there are scenes and, you know, again, no spoilers, but just saying it is kind of a spoiler. There are scenes that have sounds that sound basic, songs that sound basically like Radiohead. You know, there's this like Suspiria scene happening and then all of a sudden you get Tom York singing a basically modern rock pop song. It's very strange. You know, it's kind of an interesting concept and I like Tom York, but it, I'm not sure that it really worked for me entirely. Uh, so the cinematography is very pretty. It is shot on 35 millimeter and it has a lot of slow motion and zoom camera effects uh, of that period per Wikipedia talks about that. And that's one of the things that is worth mentioning in this movie too, is that there's just a lot to read into this movie. If, if you want to pull the movie apart and kind of inspect every element and message of it, that's the kind of movie this is. The Wikipedia page is enormous. It is very long. It's one of the longest I've come across where they're talking about all these different f facets. Um, and there are a lot of minute details like that. I also love the mise en scene. The winterish feel does work. It is interesting. I don't like it as much as the original, the Dario Argento kind of uh, feel, but it is still very much its own uh, aesthetic. So it's two and a half hours, as I said. It's a very long movie and it has kind of slow parts that then lead up to these very dynamic parts. And because of all of that, 
it's a hard movie to watch and it's even more so I think going to be a hard movie to watch again. I did like it but already I can't imagine going back to watch it. It's two and a half hours. It's very you know grueling and, and brutal. It's not really something that's fun to watch and at that length it's just a lot to ask. Um, and something else that's interesting about it is that it feels like a sequel to me. Even though it's not, it is a reimagining, or if you really want to say it's a remake, it's not a sequel, but it feels like a horror movie sequel in the way that it's retaining these elements of the original, this kind of baseline that it thinks that everybody knows, um, but is trying to, you know, evoke something new or do something new with it. And, you know, we see that the way it's kind of immediately doing things in the complete opposite way of the original, taking for granted, I think, a little bit that a lot of people do know the original. I kind of wanted a remake or reimagining of that original film. It probably still wouldn't have lived up to it, but I would have liked to have seen that more, I think, than this, you know, abstract, different take on that that concept as our modern look at the, the movie and the subject material. Overall, it's very well crafted. There's no denying that, and it is creative and ambitious. Uh, like I said, though, it is also hard to watch, and it's long. And those are kind of two, you know, very major elements in evaluating a movie, and if you want to spend time with it. I'm going to give Suspiria a C+. It does a lot of things very well, but it is also just a difficult movie on a lot of different angles, and I don't think it quite lives up to its source material. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a like, a share, and remember to follow Something Spooky.